Hello everyone, my name is Zero Believes and welcome to my mod collection. I'll go over my mods and they are all linked down below in one mod collection. They are meant to be used together. You can pick and choose though, whatever you want, but they are meant to be compatible at the very least. Over here, Animated Combat Mod will make it a little bit more common for your soldiers to use animations in combat. Better artifacts, well as the name would imply, artifacts will be better, much more powerful. We've got the Better Camera Mod, which is a need for any Total War campaign, but there are many other camera mods too, you can pick whatever you want. Bretonia by Praetor is a great mod, it actually flushes out the faction of Bretonia and makes them playable. Not only playable, but also enables their tech tree to not just be a placeholder. Over here, I wanted the Chaos Mounts to actually look proper and large. Right now, they look like a metal pony, part of a metal band in the 80s, but here they look better. Okay, Katoff, another great mod by him. Adds in a bunch of new units for Talia, Astalia, and the Border Princess too. Chaos Divided will add in a bunch to the Chaos Faction in the theme of the Four Gods. I mean, I know Chaos Undivided is meant to be undivided, but you're still going to have various demons of every type there. I mean, that is a default thing. You're going to have Plague Bearers or whatever. Over here, Conquer Anywhere in Diplomatic Options. You can actually find other variations of his mod on his page if you don't want, like, let's say, Chaos to conquer any one location. Dynamic Combat Battle Overhaul, again, I wanted to find a combat mod that would potentially add in a more balanced experience. I'm still trying to try a few, but these are usually save game compatible and are not a huge deal, so you can pick and try, and I'll probably change things up here in the future depending on what I like. Okay, faction-wide building bonus. Let's say that you have a location in Nuln, and it'll give you experience to building cannon. Instead of having it only buildable in one location to get a bonus like that, you can build anywhere in your empire, your, your kingdom to be able to have a bonus like that. In my own point of view, it's like, hey, maybe I bought a shipment of guns from Nuln and that is why they're better. But either way, I found that better because in Medieval 2, I wouldn't mind having only one location with that perk because you can build whatever you want in one town, but in the future Total War games, you have a building tree, which limits you incredibly, right? So if we're dealing with vampiric corruption, if we're dealing with things that we can't really handle very well, you won't actually be able to flesh out your building tree because you'll want to keep rebellions from going on, which is usually a fact of life that you have to deal with in Total War games now. And usually I'm having to fight chaos corruption, vampiric corruption, I'm having to prevent rebellions. A few provinces might only have like one or two, or well, not one, but two towns or three towns tops, and that's really small if you want a recruitment bonus and you have to recruit there. Okay, glory to Bretonia. Over here is a beautiful unit pack, in my opinion, one of the best mods in the game. I love it a lot, I know it's not lore appropriate, and I never add in a unlore like group, but this mod was incredible and is. I mean, let's go look through what they have right now. It fleshes out a faction that had not been updated for over 10 years. I mean, if these were actually in the tabletop, I would believe it. They would be really freaking cool, and some people would go, well, I mean, if they have all that great stuff, I mean, why would you play the Empire? Well, the Empire has gunpowder, whereas here we don't have gunpowder. If you want like a feudal fill, then here you go. I mean, look at their gear. Look at how great they look. And it's one of my favorite mods in the entire game. It's incredible the work he's done, and I hope he never quits making mods here because, I mean, he did a great job. Now, over here in my early parts of my Let's Plays, I would have to chase armies all over and I would be like one inch away from touching them to actually fight them and that drove me mad. So what I did, I got a mod here. It adds in your movement speed to go up by 10% in your own land, which to me is logical. You would know your own roads, right? You would know your own lands here better than a invader, I would hope. And over here, a lore friendly unit pack, it'll add in the Knight's Panther and a bunch of other Imperial units. And if you take a town, I believe, in Estalia Talea or Border Princess, I forget the name of it, but you'll get Volans Venatories, which is a Dogs of War mercenary group, and I like it a lot. Oh, that is why I use Dynamic Combat Battle Overhaul, because he told me to, or because he said you should. <laughs> anyway, Malay spells and artifacts. Spells are a lot more powerful. I mean a lot more. Now, on that note, Death Magic is probably too powerful. Death Magic is incredibly strong. If you want a huge challenge here, if you want your spells to actually kill things, to actually do a lot more, then pick it here. I mean, you don't get to use magic that much, and if you're fighting on, like, let's say, legendary or very hard, your foes are buffed up to all hell. At that point, 
magic doesn't really do much at all but here when they're buffed up it does a lot more and you eventually run out of magic anyway okay more skill points it gives i believe two skill points to a hero every five levels for a lord more often because you can't really flesh out a hero in only 30 levels with only 30 points or whatever it just doesn't work like that very well and then better trade triggers i wanted to have better traits because i mean they were pretty generic and boring but these are a lot more in line with what it might be in medieval 2 i found them to be a lot more fun and very generals that are strict that way they match up their appearance on the campaign map and in the actual battle what he does here he just kind of adds in a bunch of variation for all of your leaders which is quite needed and then where is the green knight that is a lore unit for Bretonia, and he has a bunch of other mods too i might use the one for Bolton, bardic Grom, and whoever else but anyway i will be changing mods over time but keep in mind they will always be compatible together they will always be able to be used together in a playthrough but you can pick and choose what you want but in every video description from now on i'm going to have my mod collection that way you know what i'm using currently and that way i'll take off any mods that might be broken or whatever but anyway thank you for watching if there's any mods that you would like for me to cover or add in let me know and we can check that out and real quick we'll go look at that but yeah see it adds in a bunch of variation for your leaders which is very cool anyway until then